All right, here we are for the first round, and we've got our red-white deck. Uh, what would you? How would you rate this deck, Brian? Like uh, maybe on a one to ten. Um, for me or for decks in general? Hmm, I don't know. What's the difference? See, for like decks in general, I think it's a six, but for me, it's like a four. Because I think my decks are better than average in general. Does that make sense? Jeez, I guess. <laughs> it's called being good at drafting. I guess so. Um, what do you think about a keep here? We are on the draw. Correct. I think it's fine. We're I think it's fine. Draw. We really have to get two more lands, but... Yes. We have a lot of cheap things we could draw, and not a lot of other expensive things. But, I mean, it, it, it's definitely a hand that needs help. But most hands need help. Ooh. Ah, perfect. See, when you play with me, you always draw what you want. <laughs> no <So>. kidding. <laughs> it helps if you focus your positive energies on what you want to draw. I think we want to draw a planes. Tell our opponent to take the fall if he's going to beat us. He, Brian, he says hi. <laughs> <laughs> he said he didn't want to get beat on stream. Well, we're not really streaming. In the third round, you take a dive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're just dictating this to him, like <laughs> Pulp Fiction style. <laughs> Oh, hey, I forgot did... to play my philosopher. What are you doing, Marshall? <laughs> I was too busy talking to you. All right, if we lose, I blame you. It's not my yeah, fault. Yeah, no, I'll take the hit for this one if we lose. Right, what are you is... doing? I forgot. Is this why you hate white red decks? Because you don't know how to curve out? No, I, I actually, curving out's my specialty, but. All right, so what's what's the recovery plan here? Cast the two drop before we attack, just in case you forget again. Well, what if we want to use rise to the challenge? Well, is that a risk that's... you're willing to take? No, I'm asking if that's the play. Yeah, I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> do okay, we, well, do, if he blocks, do we rise to the challenge is my question. Uh, no, I think we probably just accept that trade. I don't know. I think you just attack. Yeah. Okay. I will cast Traveling Philosopher. I promise. Our opponent should be at 14. 14? Well, after this hits him. Oh, I see. All right, but we've got... We've got mounting issues here as well. I, I think that the reason I, I wouldn't um, cast the rise there is because mm -hmm. we need to save our rise to kill something that actually has more than two toughness. I see. So I would have rather just cast the philosopher. Um, let, but would you not attack then? Or no, I, no, I would definitely attack. Okay, but you would just take the trade and then. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so we got there. Um, I think we don't. I, I, I usually just butcher first. Huh? Why? N n not pre-combat, but... Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I'm Give saying it, we're going to cast one of these two, too. three drops, right? Okay, yeah. I, uh, is that is that the line that you normally take is cast this and then cast this? Yeah, I think that's fine, yeah. Because that way we can, uh, if we... Actually, yeah. that doesn't really work, but anyway. So let's battle and then see what he does. Yeah. I mean, what I is actually, he doing? Yeah, I think if we, if, if we weren't going to play the guy pre-combat, we should have not played the land either, just to keep him... In the dark. Oh, yeah, true. That way he would have been more likely to, like, riptide one of our twos or something. All right, he's Horizon chimera in here. But these... Oh, because he can do this. Do what? Uh, he can't do that. No. So what is he doing here? I Nothing. Know. I don't think he's going to block. So why did he play it? Um, To he's send a message. He's just showing off a little. To put the fear of God in us, I don't well, know. Well, it's kind of working. <clears throat> All right. So this is where things can get pretty out of, out of hand for us. If he can play some big blocker here, because we don't have ways to interact with this. No, we have a divine verdict in our hand. Yeah, I just mean like our in our deck. Like this is one of, this is our main way, right? Uh, yes, or just um, making too many creatures. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can... Yeah, good. Everything is killable. 
Um, I think we saw tactics in the draft. We I did. Mean, yeah, I don't know if we can afford to play around it. I think we just kind of have to. Yeah, we can't. I mean, we're, we're racing, so we have to just go for it. Okay. Um, so do you like Skull Cleaver in here or leaving up Rise to the Challenge? Hmm. Let's see. Um, Arise doesn't help against tactics. It does not help against... Uh, no, it doesn't in, in, unless he plays it here. Right. Um, if we played Skull Cleaver, our opponent would probably block the Skull Cleaver with the Hedonist. Probably. So I think we just attack. And, and leave up Rise? Yeah, I mean, mostly we would play the Elder post-combat. Yeah. You know, okay. That's mostly, yeah. I don't think we can... Um, yeah, I think playing the Skull over there is not really advantageous. Anytime I can I can keep developing my board, I'll usually try to and, and play this for last. Right? He's going to trade here. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. All right. Didn't get countered or anything. Who needs mana? Mm. Our opponent not getting the fifth land is looking like it's really important for us so far. Yeah, I think so too. All right, that's annoying, but not too bad. If Maybe our opponent, nice. had, yeah, if our opponent had that in in his hand, he should not have played the. Or he should not have killed the two one. He should have killed the, the two, one of the two twos. For sure. But we don't know if that's the case or not. Now the question is: Is he still? Are we still racing here in his mind? Interesting. He wants to trade Laganaban Elder for Nimbus Nyad, it looks like. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. All right, so Kragma Butcher gets the pump, and we do draw Ooh. a land here. Okay, so let's see. If we cast our Skull Cleaver, um, I don't think we want a Divine Verdict here. Um, so if we, if we cast Skull Cleaver and attack, his good block is... Still uh, probably here. And yeah, it's probably... Here. It might be, even be Skull Cleaver with on Nyad. I mean, you'd and think he would do Lagana Ban Elder, though, right? Just because this is a, a longer term. Like, he takes one more point of damage now. Potentially, yeah. Um, it, it's it's really it, close. It's, it's one or the other, yeah. And then, assuming he puts the butcher or the Coastline Chimera in front of the Butcher. Right. So if we just attack without playing Skull Cleaver... We only get in for two damage. We, yeah, we trade Elder for Nyad, and we get in for two. We can get rid of the Chimera this turn, but it uses our mana pretty poorly. Yeah, I don't think we should do that. Right. Um, it's interesting. Our, our fours actually both are quite good here, the Phalanx and the... Yeah, the Emissary as well. Emissary. They're both quite good. Hmm. Um, I kind of like attacking with everything and then probably playing... Um, probably Phalanx post combat. Okay, yeah, I think that like isn't it advantageous for us to trade these type of creatures off at this point? Uh, it makes our emissary better. Yeah, yeah, it actually, it doesn't make our Phalanx better, but it doesn't yeah. make it worse either. Yeah, I guess, it, gosh, it's so close. Actually, the, I almost want to say like maybe even emissary is a better follow up. Yeah, I think it might be. Um, yeah, emissary probably is a better follow up. I think and there's no ar there's no argument for divine verdicting the Chimera here. I don't think so. I mean, that leaves right. us with a 4-3 attacking next turn, and this thing's gone. If he bricks mm -hmm. on his land drop, like, he's got a Horizon Chimera and a Nimbus Nyad. If we draw a land, we can go, like, Skull Cleaver, have Rise of the, Rise of the Challenge up. Like, that's pretty good. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, we would be trading here and getting rid of this Chimera, leaving us with 6 power. Again, I don't love the way that it's used our mana. Right, um, but I do like getting that. I mean, that Chimera is going to soak up eight damage over the next two turns. Yeah, but I mean, the first four is happening no matter what, anyways. Right. So four more, at least. Yeah. Hmm. This is interesting. Um, I kind of like having the verdict as a, a failed safe against something that we really, really need to kill. Yeah, because um, we don't actually need to kill this. Yeah. So I think we just attack with everything, and then, okay. and then we have to figure out which four we play afterwards. Okay. I I think that if he if he makes the block that we're expecting him to make, I think I like Perforos's emissary, because we're never bestowing at this game. We're we've been a little too crimped on mana for that. <clears throat> mm. 
and the both of those fours are really good here. <laughs> oh, interesting. He double blocked. Oh, so I guess we should have played our land first. <laughs> yes, we should have. Um, I did not consider this. I didn't either. Uh, is Rise to the Challenge an option here? No, right? No, I, we just killed the Nyad. Yeah. And actually, I mean, I think that block is totally fine for us. I think it is too, but I sure wouldn't have mind two for wanting him here. But I guess. Yeah. I think. Uh, so, which. I, I still like the emissary. Right. Emissary. Um, it's just he needs to find something else to be able to block it at all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, that's the good one here. And it could be lethal on its own with the rise to the challenge as well, or not quite, because uh, he's going to go to six here. But yeah, I guess one of the downsides of playing emissary is it opens up enchantment kill. Oh, that's true. Like if he's got yeah fade into antiquity or something like that. Sure, that is true. I don't think that that's enough of a reason, like without having seen it. But it is something to consider. Like I think if if we figure that this is better, we should still do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. So yeah, what we really want to do is draw a land and we can have Skull Cleaver rise and then I think he's just dead. Yeah, I think so too. So is this a snake? Oh, Nyxborn Wolf. Holy crap. But he can't really attack. Yeah, he's not even attacking. Okay, so we do our Skull Cleaver and we attack and we kill him. Yeah. I think we just kill him, right? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't even have to show him the rise. He's just dead in Oh, no, no, we do have to show him the rise. Yeah, because he can take uh, five here. Yeah. But he can't block Emissary. He's taking that no matter what. So actually, yeah, he could block here and here, mm -hmm. and then we have to show him rise. Yeah. We wouldn't have to show him rise if we got in the first two. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't make any more funny jokes, and uh, and we'll be fine. <clears throat> yeah, so our opponent just stalled on lands a little bit, and playing stuff on curve and beating down sometimes that sometimes that wins games. Yeah, sometimes not playing stuff on curve works too. Yeah. Oh yeah, fair. <laughs> I mean, we we also stumbled pretty hard on land, but our curve is much better. Yeah. Yeah, I think our deck would our deck was a little more equipped to to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Rising up. <laughs> All right. What so, changes, if any, would we make here? Um, so we see um, green blue, so he's likely to have big blockers. Um, yes. Um, Cyclops. Let's see here. We didn't see priest targets, right? Nothing great. We saw the the wolf. Like, the I don't wolf, care about that. Right. Yeah, but that's we don't fine. Care about that. Yeah, the wolf isn't great against us because um, we don't care about the the power as much because we're trying to beat down, and the one toughness isn't that big of a deal. Um, so we've got the liar, we've got the Cyclops, which looks like it trades for quite a few things on his side, but still might be worth it. Um, the Cyclops is kind Excuse of, me, sorry. it's better as a blocker for big things than it is an attacker into big things, because they can still block with their, you know, Seder Hedonist and stuff like that. Sure. Um, I, if, if anything, I would bring in the liar, but I don't know if we want to. Uh, I, I, my inclination is just to submit here and then we get to see a little bit more about what he's up to. Um, I don't think that any of these are particularly amazing. I think Faragax Giant is something we could consider here, um, though I don't really know what we'd pull out. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more worried about the games where he stabilizes than, yeah. yeah. I, so I, yeah, I think we, I think we run it back. All right, let's run it back. Um, so we're going to be on the draw again. Okay, we got a curve again. Yeah, this sort of. is good. Yeah, this is fine. I mean, this is the kind of hand in my mind that uh, that can loot. Like, he can just play, you know, like a 1-3 is pretty good against this or, you know, something along those lines. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. We don't have any of either. Yeah, but you, you now he knows we don't have Spark Joel. <laughs> Yeah, well, now he thinks we have uh, something scarier. Uh, um, so I, I want to play the philosopher here. Yeah, that's what I like too. 
We do have follow the hammer, so we can falter something later if we need to, which is nice. But he's going to get to slam a four drop here. Uh, maybe not. That's fine. So is this a trade we're willing to make? Um, yeah, I don't think it's, there's any advantage for us waiting. We drew Perforos' emissary as well, which is, uh, again, another reason that sort of keeping the board relatively clear on his side can start to be advantageous for us. Mm -hmm. If the dust settles and we have this thing, uh, I can get through a bunch, so that's nice. Oh, he's doing something. Oh, Aspect of Hydra to kill our Traveling Philosopher. Well, you probably should have at least thought about casting Paul the Hammer there. Oh, you're probably right. Uh, I, I think my thinking was, so what? But you're yeah, probably but right. It's worth, it's, worth, it's worth considering. Right, right. At any rate. I, I think we would not do it, but it's, yeah. it's worth considering. Yeah. yeah, you're totally right. Being the pilot's hard. I'm used to just playing. All you gotta do is do whatever Bwong tells you. It's pretty well, easy. I'm, I'm trying that plan, but so he's got an ordeal here. So we block, and he's just forcing us to block here, right? Yeah. If this fails, we could draw. Wow. Okay, that's fine. I'm like super stoked about that. <laughs> like I never get off that easy. <laughs> we just two for one there. Yeah, so we want to play like one of our Cyclops fours. or Emissary? I guess we play Emissary because we'd rather have Cyclops um, less likely to trade Cyclops off before we can get to Monstrosity. Um, okay. The downside of this is we could get annulled. Sure. But that's fine. No gamble, no future. Did you get that from C Wong? No. Does he say that? <laughs> Constantly. Oh, no. That's an old saying, man. Oh, okay. It embodies the Charles Wong style of that, though. <laughs> it does. He uses that as his excuse, and I just did too, so. All right, Agent of Horizons. He's got one card left in his hand. Okay, we did not draw a land. We did um, not. So... Which is a little annoying. If our opponent double blocks, that would kill our emissary. Do we want to cast? I wonder well, if we just want to arena athlete first, and then leave up fall the hammer. Like, because if he double blocks, we get to just get him, right? Yes, but um, we could just use the fall with the emissary. Uh huh. Um. The advantage of being able to use the fall with the arena athlete isn't that great. Okay. I mean, if we use the fall, we're playing the athlete anyway, though. Right. But we also, if he doesn't block, then we'd rather play our Cyclops. So I think oh, it's better sure. just to attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. All right. Battle. I, I mean, I definitely thought about the arena play. Um, he just took it anyway. Yeah. Because it would have been better to, to fall using the arena athlete so a, a bounce spell isn't quite as bad for us. Right. But he just took it. Yeah. Looks like he wants to protect his voyaging satyr. Or he, or he was scared of us having a trick there. It's true. But I mean, I mean like, he also just it, can't take take it forever, right? All right, here's something brewing here. One, two, three, four. Leaf Crown Dryad on his agent. And it looks like he's going to go for an attack here. This is ballsy. Wow. Yeah, we're hitting this race by a lot. Yeah, by, by a ton. Okay. Lando. All right, well, we get to play two, one, two, two drops here at least. So I, I like battle and just play this and this, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, wow, with Fall of the Hammer, we can get rid of both of his... We can get rid of two blockers potentially next turn. It's pretty nice. Might want to pump the brakes there, champ. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, 
It was an ambitious attack. Yeah, I mean, especially considering how many cards we had in hand. I mean, on the other, I mean, I, I guess like even even if we don't have anything, he's still losing that race. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, because he's on empty, so yeah. I can see why he's just like, well, I'm going to hit him four times and hope they don't kill me first. But he's got a lot of work to do to not die. What's the worst case here? Maybe Nylea's disciple. disciple. Yeah, yeah, that would be annoying. I mean, even then we're okay. Yeah, he would gain five, go to 16. We hit him for 100. All right, so he does nothing. He does leave his satyr up, of course. Hmm. So we have the option to observant. I'll say it here. Um, he could have what's it called? Like a savage surge or something or, like yeah, that. Or horizon chimera. Right. So um, go ahead and play the planes, and then I think we. I think we can. Let's see. Um. So we can't kill him. I think if we just attack and then use our follow the hammer potentially as insurance against him untapping his creature. Yeah, I think I like that too. Mm -hmm. So he'll probably trade Voyaging Seder for Athlete here. Oh, he's untapping some land. So I think this is going to be a Horizon Chimera. No, he didn't block. He goes to one. Um, so I kind of want to play just like a Spear Point Oread with no... I like that too. And we can leave Fall the Hammer up. We saw Observant in our hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fall hammer could. Was he just pump faking us? Is that what was happening there? Maybe, or maybe he clicked through his uh, his step on accident. And he still would have cast whatever. Oh, at end step, yeah, you're right. That was weird. I mean, grip tide was possible. There's a lot of things he could do there. But now he's in a really big jam. He's got to get ten power. He got to. He's got to get ten <laughs> damage in through our spear point oread. Like double aspect, one, two, three, six, one, two, three. That would do it. <laughs> you could kill us with two aspect of hydras. That would be the miracle. The savagest. <laughs> oh, he's he's wishing us luck. He says he hopes he wasn't embarrassingly bad, and I don't think any tap tap conceded too. That's awesome. Oh, he showed his hand, but you didn't look at he it. He did, but I had already clicked OK. All <laughs> right. So uh, even though maybe not the smoothest of operations, we're able to get through round one. So we'll see you guys in the next round.